Mr. Williams or Goodman, are you ready? Okay. I'd like to call the Saline City Council meeting to order. If you please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Members present this evening are myself, Mayor Marl, Council Members CEO, or actually CEO is, is absent, technically absent, but participating remotely. Um, at the dais this evening are Council Members Dylan Del Orco, Kamara Sulak, Kraus, and Mayor Pro Tem Gearbaugh. Um, City Manager O'Toole is participating remotely. Um, in Council Chambers this evening is Clerk Royal, Assistant City Manager Getzman, I don't think is with us. Um, Assistant, um, or City Engineer Humphreys is with us. Wastewater Treatment Superintendent Briggs, I believe, will be participating remotely. We also have DPW Director Searles uh, in the back as well. This time, the chair would entertain a motion to approve the um, agenda as amended, noting that we will be striking presentation on the sale, potential sale of Lot 20A to k and Properties Holdings. They are no longer interested in Lot 20A, but have expressed an interest in uh, pursuing another development or project elsewhere in the Saline community. So unless there are additional changes, the chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Gearbaugh to approve as amended, sir? Yes. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Kamara Sulak. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Um, is there an absent or a motion now to excuse the absence of our council colleague, uh, Jack Seal? So moved. moved again by Mayor Pro Tem Gearbaugh. Seconded by Council Member Kraus. Um, all those in favor of excusing the absence say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. I say have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Uh, we come now to the first, uh, citizen uh, first citizen comment period. Excuse me, under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward and make comment or question uh, on an item that appears on this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested, but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. First, I'll begin with those in the audience this evening. Are there any citizen comments? And again, my apologies, Assistant City uh, Manager Getzman is here. Elm, I apologize for, for, um, for not recognizing you. Um, I don't believe there are any comments from those in attendance this evening. Uh, let me defer to Clerk Royal. Was there anybody, um, or did you receive any communiques in advance of tonight's meeting in which the individual wanted their comments read at this time? No. No, okay. And Mr. Co, did you care to speak at this time? I, I would, Your Honor, thank you. I just wanted to state very briefly that I have uh, read through the entire council packet and that I'll, frankly, I was taken aback by the cost uh, to upgrade the the four lift stations and the uh, SCADA system that accompanies that. Uh, I think all of those four proposed resolutions are worthy of consideration. Very good. Comments are duly noted, Mr. Seal. Thank you very much. Um, if there are no additional citizen comments, then we'll proceed to the consent agenda. The following consent agenda will normally be adopted without discussion. However, at the request of any citizen or council member, any item may be removed from the consent agenda for discussion. Move as submitted. Moved by Dylan to approve as submitted. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Kraus. Hearing no additional discussion, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda as submitted signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. <clears throat> Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move to, on to our first new business item, which is new business um, uh, agenda item 22-48, Dubois Chemical. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the February 4th, 2022 memo from Wastewater Treatment Superintendent Briggs and to approve and authorize or not to approve the cost uh, not to exceed of 17500 per purchase of Dell Pack. Move to acknowledge and approve. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Gearbaugh to acknowledge and to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Kamara Sulak. Um, is Mr. Briggs on the line this evening? Uh, I don't believe he is. Um, City Manager O'Toole, did you care to comment or um, to uh, defer this item to another staff member? Uh, no, I'm happy to comment. Please. Uh, we, we, were, we were informed that the cost of chemicals that are essential to performing processes at the wastewater treatment plant have increased in price. Uh, previously, council had approved a cost not to exceed 16,500 per purchase um, with the with the trajectory of material costs. We're, we're seeing that that now needs to be 17,500 for the uh, current calendar year. Very good, easy enough. Um, there are questions for the city manager. Any discussion on the motion? And we'll proceed to vote. It's been properly moved by Gearbaugh, seconded by Kamara Sulak to acknowledge and to approve. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 
Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 22-49, pump station modernization contract award. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the February 8th, 2022 uh, memo from city engineer uh, Humphreys and to approve an award or not to approve the project to AZ uh, Shimana Incorporated of Brighton in an amount of 1,696,000. Move to acknowledge very good. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Gearbot to simply to acknowledge receipt. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Dillon. Um, City Engineer Humphreys, would you like to begin by coming to the podium and then um, we would welcome remarks from, uh, from Mr. Rubel? Thank you. Um, yes, I guess I'm going to start talking just a little bit about pump stations and, and what they are. I agree with you, this is a costly project. Um, this is a project that was going out for bid right when I started. Um, and so I, it was a project that's been in the works, and maybe Brian can give a little bit more history on how long it's been in the works. But what I'd like to talk to you about is, is pump stations and, and how important they are to our sanitary sewer system. Um, the pump station is a point in the system that collects all of the gravity flow and gets it over the hills. Um, it, it consists of multiple parts. There's a wet well that's a big concrete structure that collects the wastewater. It's then pumped and then pumps. All of our pump stations have submersible pumps that then pump that wastewater up through a valve vault that then pumps it up the next hill and to another part of our gravity system, ultimately on its way to the wastewater treatment plant site. Um, they're kind of like mini little plants. There's lots of pieces to them. There's mechanical, there's electrical, there's telemetry, there's SCADA, um, there's the concrete, like I mentioned, the, the piping, um, and they're, they're large pieces of liability for our system. Um, if, if, if a pump fails, um, they're is a likely event that you will get a sanitary sewer overflow event, um, which results in sanitary sewer either coming up in someone's basement or, of course, onto the, the, the sidewalks, streets, rivers, um, surface water areas. Um, and for those of us in the industry, if you've ever been in someone's basement that's flooded with water, um, you don't want it to happen. It's, it's, it's I mean, of course, the environmental concerns if it comes out on the surface. Um, just a little bit of water can do a lot of damage. And when it's wastewater in someone's basement, it's it's even more concerning. So that's obviously something we want to avoid at all costs. Um, this particular project um, touches four of our six sanitary lift stations. We also have a lift station at the water treatment plant for our backwash. Um, of those stations, um, they all need these improvements. Um, when this, this project was first presented to me, yes, <laughs> you, Colleen, and, and Tetratech, I, I, I danced around it and wanted to cut it up into pieces. I looked at pulling this piece out, um, but all of this is so critical to our system and all of this work is absolutely needed at this time. I did not feel confident postponing this project. Um, and so even when it came in a little bit over budget, even knowing the extensive scope increases at Woodland, one of the reasons it came over budget, let me back up to why it came over budget. The budget numbers were originally prepared by Tetratech back in I think 2018 as part of our SAW grants items. Um, we did not envision the magnitude of improvements needed at the Woodland pump station at that time. That pump station serves our industrial area along Woodland Drive and um, it, we've found is undersized and needs capacity upgrades. So that involves putting a whole big new wet well in, which is a big cost of that station. So that's one of the reasons why this is, is over budget or over the original budget that was anticipated a few years ago. Um, the second is just because the numbers are a few years old and, and as we all are aware of increasing supply chain issues, the cost has gone up. Um, so with this project, our four pump station improvements of varying degree, including the, to um, the wet well at Woodland, varying new pumps, new pump rails, new valve vault uh, pieces. Oh, look at fancy. Um, and, um, and, and with it though, because of the SCADA, which SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. It's, it's a short term for kind of how you're controlling and talking to your stations that, are no, that aren't where you're at. Um, because there were PLC upgrades needed at all of the pump station sites, Tetratech lumped in some water treatment site improvements to the PLC and um, SCADA and some wastewater treatment plant um, to this project also. So this lump sum project touches four lift station sites, both of our water towers, the water treatment plant site and the wastewater um, treatment plant site, which is why I divvied up in the budget. You can see there's so many numerous line item funds that this touches. Um, so that's the background I have on this project and I guess I'll, I'll open up to questions. And Let's hear from Mr. Brian? Rubel yeah. first. Yeah, uh, Mr. Rubel, if you care to add a perspective mm -hmm. to this, 
uh, we would appreciate it. I guess the one thing that I would note for the record, um, and I believe I communicated this uh, to City Council via one of my weekly communiques, I think it was probably about a month and a half back, um, I did uh, tour our water treatment plant um, on Saline Waterworks Road um, and two of our um, um, uh, pump stations, uh, one on Woodland and then one on Saline Myland with, uh, with Engineer Humphreys, uh, Wastewater Treatment Superintendent, um, Briggs and DPW Director Searles. Um, and I guess what I would ask is that between the three of you and the city manager, um, I think an invitation to tour and inspect those um, should be extended to all of city council. Um, I think that would be very enlightening. Um, having gone on, on that excursion and spoken to you directly about this, um, um, Engineer Humphreys on several occasions, um, I'm very enthusiastic and supportive of, of this motion. I think the work absolutely needs to be done. But I think until you see that firsthand, um, it, it, it's, it's more difficult to get your, 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 your head around this, this issue in, in its totality because there are a number of, of, of pieces to it. So um, and, and, you know, I don't want to belabor this point, but um, I can connect with, with Colleen or City Manager O'Toole, excuse me, after tonight's meeting. And if we could extend an invitation to all of City Council, um, I think that would be beneficial. Mr. Rubel, my apologies. The floor is yours. Well, thank you. Nice to be with you. Uh, nice to be with Ms. You. Humphreys did an excellent job uh, providing an overview uh, when we launched this uh, last summer, uh, we talked a little bit about, uh, in particular, two pump stations, Woodland and, and Maplewood. Uh, the Woodland pump station uh, serves your industrial park, and uh, a, a very significant finding that we did review with you last summer was uh, there are two pumps at that pump station. Uh, common practice for a pump station is to always have one pump in reserve. S should you have to service a pump, you've always got an extra. Through the, with the growth of the industrial uh, demand over the years, that pump station actually runs now most days with two pumps running all the time and, and no spares. So that was a very key finding uh, through some flow monitoring last spring, which kind of launched this project. So it, it's extremely urgent that something is done to that pump station to improve the reliability. Uh, Maplewood, uh, Many, many of the bones of Maplewood are in pretty good shape. The wet well, uh, the electrical system is in dire need of, of work there. Um, it, it really is kind of limping along, and uh, a big part of this project will be to replace that, that system. Uh, the rest of my letter did talk about the, the bids and the contractors. Uh, would you like just one minute review of that before? I think that would be great for the public's edification. Wonderful. Uh, we went through a bidding process, which did uh, account for recruiting a, a number of contractors. I, I bet I spoke to 10 or 12, uh, some of which uh, teamed up and, and formed some of these teams, uh, some of which uh, bid on their own. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, I wish we had five or six bids, but I, I think it's just the, the market right now. Uh, high demand on contractors. Uh, actually, kind of feel fortunate we got two uh, fairly fairly good uh, contractors. Obviously, extremely close in price between the two. Uh, did a substantial amount of research both before and after the bids to to validate that cost. Uh, called numerous vendors to inquire on what the components were of that bid and and. Looking at it from all directions, we believe that that is actually is a fair price in, in today's market for the work that was was bid. So uh, obviously rebidding is always an option. Um, that could go up, it could go down. Uh, we actually feel that if we were to rebid it today, it, it probably would not go down. It does look to be a, a fair, fair price for that work. Uh, as far as the two contractors go, uh, we did quite a bit of research, uh, the low bid, and, and the highest scored using your criteria was uh, Shmina out of Brighton. Uh, I think we've all worked with Shmina, Tetra Tech, uh, Ms. Humphreys at, at mm -hmm. prior employment. Uh, they do seem to uh, do both water, wastewater, utility type work and some building work. Uh, so they do both depending on, on the market. Uh, I think the experience with them is satisfactory. Uh, they, they seem to do the job. Um, and uh, between the two bids that we had, I, I called references for both, and, and the references for Shmina were, were outstanding relative to the other bidder. So uh, of the two uh, uh, reference checks, uh, uh, Shmina is by far uh, the best one in that regard. So, um, and again, Mr. Rubel, I know that uh, 
City Engineer Humphreys has worked with this um, enterprise in her in, uh, a previous iteration in her professional career. You have also worked with them? Uh, I have not personally, but my colleagues at Tetra Tech have. And uh, uh, satisfactory was the word. Uh, perhaps not the, not the best, but, but by far not the worst either. So uh, with that, I think between the two of us, we've summarized most of the issues pretty well. So I would be happy to entertain questions as they come up. Very good. Um, well, let's start with Mayor Pro Tem Gearbaugh, the mover of the motion. Questions for either uh, the city engineer or Mr. Rubel or both? Um, actually, this is probably, well, for both, but however you want to do this. Um, it mentions replacement of pumps for a south side pump station. We have purchased some newer pumps for those. So this isn't <coughs> a replacement of all those. This is taking into consideration new stuff that we bought in the last yeah. year and a half. Yes, yes. And actually, um, yes, we, we pre-purchased, um, I think, four. To Colleen knows all the numbers that we pre-purchased. And so, yes, we pre-purchased some pumps, and then there's actually two pumps included in this work also, in this contract. Yes, yeah, so we went through all of that a bit. Yeah, so we had pre-purchased some, and then there's a, a three we just decided included in this work also, because all there's four pump stations of which, I guess I'd have to add how many total pumps, because there's one at South Side, but so we're getting multiple new pumps as part of all of this. And just because I know that we were supposed to purchase and replace some, so I didn't know if we were redoing some right. work and just using some existing pumps. This is in addition to, so my understanding is that we have pre-purchased um, four pumps, and those pumps have been ordered. Um, They've done reviews, shop drawing reviews. We're now just waiting. On For them to come out. Right. Is that true? I believe they've actually been delivered. Oh, uh, even better. And uh, they will be installed by this contract. Yes, even better. Okay, Good. they've even been yeah. delivered. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other piece, um, when you mentioned the awarded bidder, you said satisfactory. Although in the letter it kind of says, um, to a, uh, while not perfect. What is while not perfect defined? <laughs> There were no problems. It, 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 there are just some contractors you need to uh, push a little more than others. Uh, let's say that. Uh, obviously, in life, some people are a little bit more organized and, and deliver than others. Um, again, this was not a, a bad experience working with Shmina. Uh, just, and, and that's why you, you retain consultants to help you with the construction, is to keep an eye on them and, and push them when they need to be pushed. So. I know we had similar issues. Water treatment plant with a delay with one of our vendors in the past. So, so just, uh, that's for sure. and if I may, Mr. Gerba, um, Mr. Rubley, as as our long-term consultant, you're, you're aware of this. But um, citing the number of issues we've had with utility services and water wastewater, um, I, I think I speak for everybody on council and everybody on staff that as we engage contractors in the future, I, I hope they know um, we're striving for a standard of excellence here. We're not playing around anymore. This isn't a game. Uh, we want people to deliver quality services, quality products on time, and we're not going to tolerate anything less. So um, I want to just be really emphatic on, on that point, and I, and I know that you are, but I, I, I thought there was value in stating it again for the public record. You, 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 I assure you that if I am involved, you will, uh, that goal will be set, <laughs> and uh, they will be held to that. Good. Sorry, Mr. Gerbaugh. No, fine. Um, yeah, just that concern because we've had issues with the legal aspect of it and dragged out a number of issues under the contract, so I was glad to hear that. Um, the other one, currently, you know, we look at layer farms and trying to understand um, what they're doing so far. I see a lot of equipment sitting next to the pump station that's there on Maple. Um, what is all of that stuff doing, and is it a hindrance or part of it, or what is it all going on? Right now, what's out there is dewatering equipment. Um, they ultimately do have, um, I don't know if they've tied into our pump station or not with the, the gravity sewer that's been installed there. They do have as part of their site plan requirements an obligation to provide us with a generator for that pump station. And I believe that has um, almost through the shop drawing review process with Tetra Tech at this time. Okay. But that is included as part of this to make sure those are <coughs> that when the farm is responsible for using. Those are, though, they're, they're identified as others. Uh, the generators is identified as improvements by others on this particular contract mm -hmm. document. Got it. Okay. Thank you. And then lastly, um, this has to do not so much with you and Miss Zill too, can maybe mention this. Um, my concern is making sure that the contributions coming from our industrial park and our TIFA are significant enough to cover the cost of the um, woodland uh, pump station because I feel that is a direct relationship to those properties and that yeah. if we need to go back in and tweak or find other funds or resources or even <coughs> make advanced uh, loans from those to pay for this, that's how it should be. It should not be that 
sort of settled into the fee structure that we currently have. I agree with you that this is a, it's a benefit to that area as far as woodland, um, and I'll, I'll let Colleen speak on the availability of funds. Um, the, the woodland portion of this project is, is a substantial portion of the project. And that may be something that will come up in the future, right. but just yes. I want to make that statement that I believe that yes. there is more of a potential benefit to those mm -hmm. oh, areas. And that's than, absolutely a true statement. we should ever allocate to the you know, citizens. Uh, City Manager O'Toole, do you care to comment to uh, Mr. Gearbaugh's uh, statement, his, his final statement there? Uh, yes, we do have some funds allocated from TIFA. There is not a sufficient amount of money given the other projects that are slated to occur within that district to cover the full cost. So we have... Um, Forty-five thousand and fifteen thousand. Which, coming. in that case, I would think if we could look at potentially other solutions or whatever we need to do in that, in terms of either um, re-prioritizing um, projects or other things, that may be a consideration. Um, just as we look at this, I think that's a big consideration when we start looking at raising fees and such that more direct impact from the taxes that are recovered through those properties and even some of the offset that we receive from the state as a result of the loss of personal property tax to somehow contribute back to those costs, even if it comes out of our fund balance. So um, for me, that's just a statement I'm making right now and would like to have us consider as we go into this project. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, additional questions for either the city manager, um, city engineer Humphreys, or Mr. Rubel. Mr. Delarico, please. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I want to um, echo some comments by my colleague, uh, Mr. Seo, made earlier. Um, according, going back to the asset management plan, the original amount budgeted for this was four hundred seventy-two thousand dollars. Now we're looking at a three and a half fold increase over that amount, um, and the major reason cited was that there was. Um, a increased demand from the industrial areas. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. Is, is there been an unexpected increase in the um, major changes to the industrial demand, industrial demand on our utilities in the last few years? Or I mean, I'm just wondering why we weren't setting aside more money for this as we anticipated the, the need to upgrade the station. Um, and well, I Coming into this, my, my understanding is that industry, the um, Woodland Pump Station was not fully evaluated until after that asset management plan was done in 2019. Okay. There was a subsequent study done that, Brian, that Mr. Rubel was talking about that was presented, I want to say as early as earlier this, or in 2021, the final results were presented. Um, so those, my understanding is the saw was done in 2019. There was I identified some need for improvements at the Woodland Station. It was further evaluated subsequent to the saw and then identified the need for all of these improvements. Now, as far as the actual, what, I'll, what I do know about the Woodland Station is that from talking to operators at that station and looking at pump run time data out there, the pumps run all the time. They're running to, they, they run too much. Um, and, and, the, and that's because the wet well is undersized. And, I, and this is what Tetratech found in their study and is why the wet well is recommended to be improved now. So that involves digging out. There's a, a four foot structure out there right now that's, I don't know how deep, let's say 15 feet deep. We're gonna replace that with an eight foot wide, 15 deep foot structure that was not anticipated in 2019. So that right there is a substantial part of the increase in cost is that new wet well. Um, and so. Um, well, you would agree that the, the major culprit is the industrial users to, is putting the demand on the wastewater. I would I would agree that the well industrial users are hard to to design for because an industrial building can either have an office and a bathroom in it or it can be a food processing facility that produces a bunch of water. So in an industrial area, it's, 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 it's very difficult to size a lift station for an industrial area because you're making assumptions on what those buildings are going to be. And of course, those, use, those changes, those building uses can change. Um, this does serve American soil. It serves the woodland. It serves our industrial area. Okay. Um, we know we have some large water users in that area. So when this was originally sized, I'm not sure what it was sized for, but I do know that a four-foot diameter wet well serving the industry we have there is too small without doing any calcs. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, my next question is for City Manager O'Toole. Um, I share Mr. some of Mr. Gearbaugh's concerns around uh, this not uh, 
being footed by the ratepayers and it being coming coming the source of funding coming from the appropriate uh, contri contributions. Uh, shortly before Assistant City Manager Mike Green's departure, we sat down and had a discussion about an upcoming uh, ordinance that might come through the Code Review Committee around wastewater enterprise funds and how we could um, better appropriate those funds is or come up with a, a logical way to spend them down. Is this something we can earmark for this expenditure? Uh, yes, we can. Oh, we lost you there, Colleen. Uh, yes, we, we could absolutely look at using some of those uh, reserve dollars. We could also, I, I, frankly, look at using what Mr. Gearbaugh suggested, which is the legislative changes line item, which would be appropriate given that that money was kind of recaptured from um, these changes in, in the taxing districts. But as far as trying to use actual um, TIFA or LDFA dollars, uh, because we have the East Look project coming up, a majority of that capture is, is kind of already earmarked for for that project. And to Engineer Humphreys's points, frankly, when the asset management plan was done, they just did not fully capture the scope of work that was going to be necessary at the Woodland Pump Station. And so historically, it was under budgeted. Okay. But you, you did say that the... Um... LDFA TIFA funds were not going to be sufficient to cover the expenditure. Correct. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just trying to understand where the rest of the money is going to come from. Well, right now, the rest of the money is slated to come from the bond proceeds that we have. We would have to reduce the scope uh, based, based, on, based on this scope. We'd have to reduce the scope of other projects. And we did have a, a sizable portion of dollars set aside for grade four and grade five um, sewer defects, which um, I, I believe we would be talking about re repurposing some of those funds for this project. Okay. All right, thank you. Is it Mr. Delarco? Thank you very much. Councilmember Dillon. Thank you. Um, my questions are probably for City Manager O'Toole, um, just sort of sticking onto the topic of dollars and, and where the, the funding sources. So are we looking at doing this project now in its totality because we're going to have the bond proceeds? Otherwise, would this have been tabled to, a, to another point or broken out into smaller subparts? Um, if we did not have the bond proceeds readily available, I, I would say we, you'd probably see Engineer Humphreys and I here requesting that the city bond for the project. Um, we, we, we have looked at it every which way, um, as engineer Humphreys noted, we, we tried to consider, um, whether some of this work could be scheduled for a later date or scaled back. And we just feel that the, the criticality of each component is such that we have to move forward. Okay. I understand that. I, I do have a little bit of concern about shaving from another project at this point because that project was also important. And so trying to find that balance, um, is there any way to increase our bond amount? Is there any way? I just want to make sure that we're all in agreement as to what we're giving up to do this. And I, I, I don't feel like I have a full understanding of that, and I apologize for it. Um, because I don't want to be down the road and we're looking at the same situation where we're going to have to forego something else to pay for the project that we're using the funds for now to pay for that project where we're just paying, continually playing catch up. So I, I'd like to just have a really good understanding of that, if that's possible. Yes, um, so I don't disagree with you. We, when we talk about using bond proceeds, if we scale back the scope of those grade four and grade five uh, defects, what we're talking about is, is reducing the amount of lining that we would be capable of doing in any given year. Well, in, in the upcoming year that the bonds would cover, the next 18 months or so. Um, I, I don't disagree with you, and I don't think anyone on staff would disagree that we also view those as 
priority projects and we now need to find out find other sources of revenues for those projects okay. so i i don't i don't have a uh silver bullet answer to this question um i just know that this is the you know this is this is the project that we have to consider now um and and we don't feel that it it's appropriate to to scale it back or, or keep trying to delay right so we're basically about a million dollars short right now in funding that we would have to find an alternative source for correct okay um like I said, is there any way that we can increase the bond? We we cannot increase the bond. We'd have to do a new bond issuance. Okay. okay. I, Though I, no, I'm sorry. I, I will I will say notably, bond issuances for less than a million dollars are much more streamlined and less costly to pursue than those over a million dollars. Okay, um, I'll just stop there and see what other questions others have. Thank you. Very good. Councilmember Kamara Sulak, questions for our guest or, or Mr. Rubel, who's our guest, or uh, um, City Engineer Humphreys or City Manager O'Toole. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. There's a, lot, there's a lot going on and a big price tag. So uh, it's, I think it's important uh, to understand the approximate cost of each com maybe the each component of this, uh, like for example, the, the woodland pump station, as we've discussed, it being a, a larger a larger piece of this, just to have some sort of a of a scale. How much how much are we talking? Yeah, woodland is half of the project. Woodland is just shy of eight hundred thousand dollars, so it's it's a significant cost. Take some time to digest that. Yeah, other components. Uh, uh, you know, there's there's some common costs that are about 125,000. Uh, Maplewood is about 500,000. I'm, I'm rounding off slightly. Uh, South Side's about 100,000. Uh, Arboretum is 25,000, and then the skate improvements are 150,000. Okay. What is the typical lifespan of these pumps? And what kind of warranty comes along with it? Yeah, uh, pumps you would like to get uh, 10, to, 10 to 20 years out of the pumps. Uh, uh, I, there's a one year warranty that comes with all components on this project. Um, I think I answered your question. Yeah. So is there a, is there a maintenance contract that, that we have if, if there are any any problems or are are we capable of making making the repairs uh, small repairs uh, I, I think the plant staff could do uh, but there are very there are local service providers uh, specialty providers um, the pumps are coming from uh, Wixom uh, a service provider in Wixom I mean they're manufactured overseas but they're, they're literally somebody just up the road that right. that would service that. Uh, also, electrical panels can be serviced by by local uh, contractors should should that need arise. Okay, that that helps. Mm -hmm. What approximate savings uh, are we benefiting by doing all of this at once? Or just an just an approximate would be would be fine. Yeah, if you if you did one a year, for instance, to to parcel it out, I, I would think ten to twenty percent higher, perhaps, by doing it that way. Just my my gut. And then there's the inflation that we is is very hard to quantify right, right. now. So. Yeah, I I think uh, that would that would just be more. I, so. Um, I'm a little concerned because of your not so strong endorsement to you know to be honest and I, I know we touched on that earlier but i'm i'm still trying to process that because it it sounds mediocre um and as the you know the mayor said <clears throat> we are striving for for excellence but that's that's really sticking that's really sticking with me that 
we're not the most confident in their in in this contractor. So I'm it, a little reticent yeah, let, yeah, about. Let me let me that. let me back up on that. Uh, if they couldn't do the job, we would not have brought that name forward to you. So they can do the job. They have shown past experience doing the job. Uh, you will hire a consultant to help you, and uh, as as the mayor very uh, uh, correctly asked for, uh, part of my job will be to make sure they do their job for you. Um, their their subs, though, I have uh, any any big complex project is actually constructed by a team of contractors. Mm -hmm. uh, Shmina is the general contractor. They will subcontract, uh, goodness, probably two-thirds of the work would be my guess. Uh, I believe they are going to install some of the, the wet wells uh, themselves, do some of the excavation themselves, but they are going to uh, subcontract with Midwest Power Systems mm -hmm. to do the piping, the, the pump installs. Um, Midwest Power Systems, I think, is a name that is familiar. They, they really were a, a great asset to the city in 2021 at the wastewater plant and the water plant, just doing a dozen miscellaneous things. And uh, so I do have great confidence in, in them. And the electrical sub is, is Best Electric, which is uh, probably the predominant uh, electrical contractor for water and wastewater utilities in this area. So I have an enormous amount of confidence in them as well. So uh, again, I would, we would not have brought that name forward if this company has not demonstrated the ability to do this work. Okay. And the size and the scope of the, of the pumps and that what we're gonna be doing is planning ahead sufficiently for the new uh, upgraded wastewater treatment plant uh, and for our future growth perfect, uh, projections. And I, I apologize if this was already touched on. No, that's a good question. Um, uh, Maplewood and Southside, I, I can uh, tell you have been. Uh, that was calculated when Lair Farms came in. Um, Arboretum is one of the stations. Again, that's a isolated service area. So I didn't, there was no growth expected uh, to that service area. Um, uh, Woodland, uh, there is a uh, Woodland. There is some growth in there, but um, uh, you may recall when we talked about this in the summer. Uh, well, we had actually built in some ability to increase the capacity at Woodland with the speed of of the the pumps. Turning the speed faster will increase the capacity. We have equipment that will allow that, so we have that built in. Uh, there is perhaps a sewer project that may be needed uh, down the road, many, many years down the road, if that industrial park were to grow much further. Uh, no need to do that project right now, but that is something that we are aware of and, and uh, will help you keep an eye on. All right. So are you saying that what we're doing right now with the Woodland pump station, it will be sufficient uh, for 10, well, for the expected uh, economic life of, of of the pump 15 20 years I just want to make sure that we're not we're making the right decision for the long term and not oh we, we should have had a larger size or capacity <laughs> Certainly, not, I mean, not, now is the time to make sure and be absolutely safe it, sorry it, it through our foreseeable future that will be correct uh, you do have one big industry there that has approached the city a number of times about expanding and and actually this last time when we talked about it, they were able to more recycle water, use less water, and that helped. But if that were to change, they were to come back and say, I need 50% more water, this would not be large enough. Okay. I, I just can't build that much extra into mm -hmm. it. Okay. Um, I appreciate all the, all, uh, all the information on this. I. You know, this is a lot. This is a lot of money and a lot for us to get our, uh, you know, heads around. Um, and I, I, I would like to do a tour. I would have liked to have gone on on that tour of the pumps that um, all of you and the and the mayor went on because I think that would that would help help me understand the the, the gravity, no pun intended, uh, of of the situation and and the cost that we're going to be going to be incurring.
So I, I just want to state that for the record, um, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is probably for City Engineer Humphreys, or maybe even for the clerk. I, I, uh, I do not have the bid document in front of me. My apologies. When does the um, bid from the um, Shimina, how do you pronounce the name? Shimina. Shimina. Excuse me. My goodness. A verbal tick tonight. Um, when does the um, bid expire? It was a 60 day hold from December 21st. It was 90. Oh, 90, okay. But we have to have all the contract documents. documents completed by then. So it would be very difficult to get to March and, and not have your, okay. your permission. Go go. Okay. Fair enough. That's the clarification I, I was looking for. Thank you, Mr. Rubo. I, I have a follow up, please, with that information. Um, and it's all due respect, don't take this the, the wrong way. Um, if it was signed back in, in December, is there any reason why we're not, we didn't talk about it sooner than now? It was bid in December. Bids were received in December. Okay. Yes. Um, so we, we bid the document in December. My understanding, it has been here for council before when Tetratech um, brought the revised study back when the saw was originally brought to council. My understanding, it was here as early as what Mr. Rubel was just saying this past summer. Um, and the bid documents, quite frankly, it would have been here in January if we weren't dancing around with a high price and, and trying to see what we could cut out of it. Um, so we had originally hoped for the January. We had talked about the January, I think, 24th mm -hmm. meeting, and then we were breaking it down. We even aimed for last week's meeting. Um, and again, just for this breakdown of costs, uh, it got pumped, it bumped to this meeting. So Okay. So, all right. That helps. Yeah. I, I appreciate looking into that and analyzing to make sure that, you know, the costs are... Are, are correct and this is what we have to work with. So. Right. And, I, and I, I do realize the costs are high. In fact, um, this is the, um, what I've been living for the last month is looking at some of these capital costs and trying to prioritize them. I mean, quite frankly, there's a lot of capital teed up right now. And, and um, what I have been working on uh, nights and weekends is just prioritizing all of that. There's a lot of capital heading my way in my department. And, and this project is before you because I think it's the most important project. Okay, great. Thank you very much, <laughs> Director Humphreys. Any additional questions on the motion to acknowledge receipt? There appears to be none. Then we'll proceed to vote. Um, all those in favor of the motion moved by Gearbox, seconded by Dylan, simply to acknowledge receipt of the February 8th, uh, 2022 memo from City Engineer Humphreys, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. I say having the motion carries unanimously. Uh, next up would be a motion to approve an award or not to approve or any modified um, motion that is appropriately worded. Move to approve an award. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Gearbox to approve an award. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Dylan. Um, again, I assume staff and Mr. Rubel, you care, you don't care to make any additional comments, do you? No, very good. Um, is there any subsequent discussion on the motion? Mr. Gearbaugh, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, the only thing is that I think this is one of our priorities is to make sure that we have a working infrastructure and we have discussed some of these repairs for the last year and a half with the uh, um, task force and that a number of these items, it's not that they're worn out. We've gotten useful life out of these items. Some of these pumps are 20 years old. It's just that it is time and now if we can do it all at once, it's the time to do it. Um, and when I made this statement about not wanting to charge users, I didn't necessarily mean not wanting to charge um, American Soy. They are a heavy user and they should be paying a significant fee to um, accommodate for this. So um, as we look at that, I think they also need to some type of surcharge. But whatever we can do in terms of recycling water in the future and so forth will be one of our priorities that we're going to have to look at because we can't continue to expand and expand. We need to figure out ways to not only be more, more environmentally friendly, but better ways to operate and think differently. So um, I think this will be a helpful approach right now, and we just have to continue in the future to make sure that we do this regularly. Good. Additional discussion? Councilmember Dillon. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you to Engineer Humphreys and to Mr. Uh, Rubel for providing all the information. And at the end of the day, for me, I defer to your expertise in this. If you think this is a, the, the priority that needs to be first in line, then that's what we need to look at. And we are going to have to make some adjustments on the backside of other projects. And, you know, there's always that hope that we're going to get some federal or state dollars coming down that might help to offset other projects or help bring them back to the table. And so um, I just wanted to, to acknowledge that I, I appreciate the work and effort that you've put into this. Very good. Mr. Commissioner Sulek. Yeah, I would like to second that, uh, that, se that sentiment. This, this is definitely needed, needed and uh, a big infrastructure. Uh, uh, 
What is the timeline for the completion of of the, this replacement and upgrade? Well, actually, there's there's quite a bit of equipment and shop drawing review that comes with it. So we were even talking that the construction likely wouldn't even start in this fiscal year. We would just be getting started because our fiscal year ends, you know, June thirtieth. So. You know, if it was awarded now, um, contract documents takes a few weeks, and then you stop shop drawing review process. They submit submittals to Tetra Tech, get a, and then order things and get supplies in before they even mobilize to the site. I believe the the contract documents have about a year's worth, of 360 days ish, of, of to completion. To, so from contract, so it would b need to be substantially complete. You know, about a year from now. Okay, and it, would they be, have a priority to which pump station, uh, like maybe Woodland? Uh, be completed first, or is it all based on you know economies of scale and what makes the most sense? Yes, it's that ladder, isn't it, in the document? Yes, yeah, it's, it's ladder in the document. And, and in, in fact, each of these, um, a lot of these pump stations are required bypass pumping to be performed to do the work. So, what you see out at um, Maplewood right now is actually um, is, is dewatering, um, but it's similar in that there's pipes running across the top of the ground and there's pumps out there. So bypass pumping is very similar looking to that, and that you'll have pipes running across the ground and pumps and all that. So I envision that they will be working at a site <laughs> and get that site and then move to the next site. But it, the, it's at their um, the contract documents do not specify a sequence of construction. Okay. All right. Thank you again. Thank you. Any additional discussion oh, or comments? Oh, please, Mr. Rule. Uh, although not required by the contract, I, I would hope that, uh, and we'll, we'll determine this when we meet with the contractor, you have these pumps that have, have arrived and are ready to be installed. So I believe we will be successful in getting those installed much earlier because you pre-purchased those. So no. we, we will push for that on your behalf. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. That makes perfect sense. Thank you again. There appears to be no additional discussion on the motion. We have a motion on the floor moved by Mayor Pro Tem Gearbaugh, seconded by Council Member Dillon to approve and to award. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you both. We move on to new business item 22-50, construction services pump stations. Uh, this is a significantly smaller dollar amount. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the February 8th, 2022 memo from City Engineer Humphreys and to approve or not to approve the proposal from Tetra Tech for construction engineering services for pump station modernization project in an amount not to exceed $125,000. Move to acknowledge and approve. Moved by Mayor Pro Tim Gearbuck to acknowledge and to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Council Member Del Orco. Um, City Engineer Humphreys, would you like to begin? And then if you'd like to uh, um, yield the floor to Mr. Rubel, that would be, uh, that would be acceptable. Um, yes, thank you. And and first of all, we absolutely will get that pump station. This has to do with the same project. It's for the um, construction engineering services for Tetra Tech. And as um, Mr. Rubel stated um, a little bit ago, we, we absolutely um, would like the help of a consultant to oversee Shemina's work as they're going along, review shop drawings, um, keep them on schedule, all of the things that go with construction engineering. So um, that's what's in front of you on this second um, proposal. And like I said, we will definitely get a, a tour schedule because I really like pump stations. Um, they're, they're, I like the hydraulics associated with them and, and, um, and we only have six of them. I, I came from a system up in Livingston County where we had um, almost 50 pump stations. So, wow. so I think there's, there's, there's fewer here and, and um, we'd love to take you out to them sometime. So we'll, get the, we'll definitely get that schedule. Yeah, it's, it's very enlightening. I would encourage it. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Rubel, is there anything like you'd like to add to uh, City Engineer Humphreys' re uh, Humphreys's remarks? I'll be very brief. Uh, I, I absolutely will take uh, your uh, request to heart, and uh, I'm pleased that uh, an assistant who helps me with administering this construction is absolutely the best advocate for our clients that I have ever seen in the construction industry. So he is an extremely rigorous man, and... Uh, uh, I do not have to ask him twice to uh, make sure that uh, uh, we are driving that uh, contract to success. So I, I, when Ms. Humphreys meets him, I am sure that she will be thrilled with uh, his service to Celine. So, and I'm optimistic as well that uh, with the contracts authorized last week, uh, that there's some efficiencies here so that we will strive to bring this in under budget as well. So. Um, excellent. Thank you both. Um, questions for um, City Engineer Humphreys or uh, Mr. Rubel. Council Member Dillon. Thank you. And I'm not sure if my question would be for Mr. Rubel or for City Manager O'Toole, which was one of the things that we did not do in that big lump sum 
of the previous action was have any contingency plan, which was part of Mr. Rubel's recommendation. Um, I obviously, I mean, we, we've kind of maxed out on that dollar amount. Is there a way in which we can keep a very close monitor as to those contingency fees that, you know, and see if there's anything like minute by minute kind of a thing so that we know before they get out of control and find a funding source for them? Yeah, I, I would be happy as part of my regular communication to council to report on, on the budget status for this project once it gets started. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions for either the city manager, our guest, or Ms. Humphreys? No, easy enough. Is there any discussion on the motion? We have a motion uh, then moved by Mayor Pro Tem Gearbaugh, seconded by our council colleague, Mr. Del Orco, to acknowledge and to approve. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. I say have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 22-51. This is Clark Street design proposal. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the February 9th, 2022 memo from City Engineer Humphreys and to approve or not to approve the proposal from Fleece Vanderbrink for design and engineering services for the Clark Street project in an amount not to exceed $56,400. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Gearbach to acknowledge and to approve. You're on a roll tonight. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dylan. Um, City Engineer Humphreys, would you like to begin? And then I know that we have Dan Kabaj from Fleece Vanderbrink in the back. Um, and Dan, when uh, Tesha is done, if you'd like to share some remarks, we would welcome that. City Engineer Humphreys. Thank you. And I, I will turn it over to Dan here in just a minute. Um, so this is, is, is another capital job, and this is a new one. Um, and like I said, I've been spending a lot of time looking at our capital improvement plan and, and prioritizing a lot of our infrastructure, our buried pipelines, and like our previous thing we just talked about, the pump station project. Um, this is this particular project that's in front of you is is for Clark Street, and it was um, started as a, as a road project only back in 2017. Um, we we get funding, um, federal funding comes funneled through the state through MDOT and MDOT funnels it through the county through Watts, which is the Washington Area Transportation. So we've had this project in front of Watts now for multiple years, so much so that we actually secured funding on the, the amount of, and I apologize, I have my pump station folder in front of me, but I think about $480,000 in funding from Watts. Um, so this project is in is slated for fiscal year 23 with Watts, which means like a bid date of, of about a year from now um, through MDOTs, and, and we would be the local agency through, um, doing the documents, and, and then we get that money. Um, right now, the total project cost for just road improvements, some storm improvements is, is, is in the five to $600,000 range. That's how much we have budgeted in our, our capital improvement plan for fiscal year. I think it was originally budgeted for 24, which because of the way our fiscal year falls, it makes sense. Um, so, um, this project is one that was already moving, and I'm just keeping it moving along. So um, Fleece and Vandenbrink has been involved with this. Um, as you can see, they've prepared a, a nice proposal. I'll let him talk a little bit more about the actual project, why it's needed. There is some ponding and such out there. Um, and, and yeah, that's where the project, that's the project sits. Very good. Dan, please. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I guess uh, uh, Tesha did uh, uh, summarize quite a bit about the uh, Watts funding. This has been out on the uh, uh, programming through Watts uh, for, I believe, since 2017. Uh, we've been involved uh, uh, communicating with uh, previously city engineer uh, Gary Rubel and then Jeff Fordyce on this project. Very excited to see it uh, finally uh, get uh, forwarded on, on to you for approval for design. Uh, this will go through an MDOT process uh, with the federal and state funds involved. Uh, the city's share is typically on these type of projects, um, uh, I'll remove that, 20%, 20 80% uh, 20 uh, of that is through the federal funds. So it's a good program that you've uh, capitalized on before. Uh, Old Creek Drive and Austin Road uh, went through this process, and I believe uh, you had a consultant uh, work for Industrial Drive when that uh, project was uh, presented. So. Uh, the city has uh, had some good uh, benefit from that, uh, those type of programs. And um, we have a scope of service that we've outlined in a little bit more detail on uh, some of our proposal information, but uh, uh, it's straightforward where we'd like to be on the MDOT uh, letting where we uh, see contractor bids for next January. Excellent, very good. Um, the questions for city engineer Humphreys or our guest, uh, Mr. Kavaj from Fleece Vanderbrink. Mr. Gearbaugh. Uh, more for Tasha, maybe. Does this coordinate with anything where we do Maple Road? 
Yes, and, and actually, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I, I made a note about last in the last because um, East Colleen brought up East Belt, which is our sanitary sewer. I think everyone's aware along Maple Road that we are currently in the design phase for. So absolutely. So East Belt goes from Maple Road. It goes south from Woodland all the way across Michigan down to Henry, um, and along Old Creek there and down to Henry. So Clark is north of Michigan, and so this intersection is absolutely one that is is in both the intersection of, of our East Belt improvements and the, the Clark improvements. And that's something we've talked about is making sure, um, because especially with this particular one, the Clark one, um, MDOT is very particular on your point of beginning and point of end. You don't do work out, and for federal money, you don't do work outside your, what is established point of beginning and point of end of your contract. So we will have to be very cautious of where our point of beginning is on the eastern edge of this contract, which is Maple Road, which is the East Belt project. Will there be any changes to Right now, um, the proposed changes are n no. For the signaling or the intersection, um, we do not have any major changes in the traffic layout. There is some storm water improvements, though, that we know at that intersection that we need to look at. We need to figure out how that interlaps with the two projects. Um, because storm water comes down and kind of goes around and goes a little bit um, west on Clark and then kind of goes through. It doesn't follow a street south. It goes kind of cross country south. So there's some potential stormwater improvements we can look at in that area. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions? Thank you, Tesha. Dan, thank you. Um, any subsequent discussion on the motion? Appears to be none. We have a motion on the floor then moved by Mayor Pro Tem Gearbaugh, seconded by Dylan to uh, acknowledge and to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. I say have it. The motion carries unanimously. Um, let's begin with Commission, Committee, and Task Force reports. I realize it's only been a week since our last meeting, so if you don't have any, simply pass. But I will start to uh, start to my left and end to my right. So, um, well, actually, I'll end with Council Member CEO, who's participating remotely. Mr. Delorco, any Commission, Committee, or Task Force reports? Yeah, I'd just like to mention briefly, um, I am meeting with the Environmental Commission tomorrow, but there was an update that I failed to mention at our last meeting, uh, which everyone will be excited to hear. Um, the, the glass recycling has been reinstated. Um, we are going to get our glass recycled via the Ann Arbor Recycling Center. This information was shared to me uh, some moments ago by uh, Director Larry Searles. Um, so we're very excited to hear that. There's not going to be any extra charge to put this arrangement in place, and we can all get back to feeling good about our glass being recycled. Marvelous. So can glass be, um, is that effective immediately? Okay. Oh, very good. Um, and I would ask between Mr. Delorco and Mr. Searles or the city manager, let's make sure we get something to um, IT, more specifically our PR generalist, because we we'll want to blast something out this week on that. So I know of many people who have forfeited their ability to uh, recycle glass in light of, of news of the last right. couple months. So yeah, this, this is good this, news. Yeah, this is excellent news. Thank you for sharing that. Mayor Pro Tem Gearbaugh, any commission, committee, or task force reports? Um, just our rec, rec task force. We um, last week visited three more sites just to get an idea, um, one in Adrian, one in um, Flat Rock, and then also one in Sylvania, just to see what other types of facilities are coming out there. And it seems that most of them are all, again, looking at doing some kind of changes and modifications. So it's just interesting to see what other communities have accomplished and what we may be able to do ourselves. So hopefully that will be encompassed and be part of our um, final update when we come down in late March or early April. Very good. Thank you. Councilmember Dillon, any commission, committee, or task force reports? Not at this time. Mr. Commissioner Sulak. Uh, Selene Youth Council uh, meets tomorrow, and the DEI committee meets on Wednesday, so I do not, um, but I would like to make one one point that uh, I'm glad to hear that the glass will be included now, and all the glass that I've been keeping the last um, months will now go to uh, go to the uh, Ann Arbor facility. Thank you very much, Mr. DeLarco. Very good. Councilmember Krause, any um, commission, committee, or task force reports? Not at this time. Uh, Mr. CEO, any commission, committee, or ca task force reports? Just a report that there will be a Parks and Rec Commission or meeting this Wednesday night. And if anybody would want to attend, I think we're going to be doing it remotely. Please contact either Carlos Scruggs or, uh, or the city clerk, Terry Royal, and they'll be happy to give people the, uh, the means to tune into that meeting. Very good. Um, Council Member Del Orco, any reports or uh, announcements? I have none. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Gearbaugh? None. Council Member Dillon? None. Mr. Kamer, or Council Member Kamer Sulak? None. Council Member Krause? No. 
And Mr. Seal, any other reports or announcements? No, sir. Okay, well then uh, we will end with City Manager O'Toole on rental, uh, rental house certification, uh, a new program that uh, she would like to launch. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking for this evening is after she's done sharing some remarks, if you have questions, we'll entertain those, but we are looking for consensus if we can move forward and adopt some, some new policies uh, pertaining to our, our local tenants and landlords. So with that, I will turn it over to the city manager, Ms. O'Toole. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Mayor. Yep, um, I did provide council with some preliminary information related to this subject, uh, specifically, a proposal of what a program would look like from our current code enforcement services support group, which is um, CES uh, underneath the Carlisle Wartman banner. Uh, essentially what this program would entail is every set number of years, uh, typically two to three, we would have residential um, re uh, rental units on an inspection program. They would have to meet baseline criteria uh, for building conditions in order to pass the certification process and be deemed suitable for habitation. And I think uh, we all recognize the need for a program of this nature because of some of the, the comments that we've seen, especially out of a handful of the, the larger uh, multifamily residential units in town. We really wanna make sure that our housing stock, um, not just our single family housing stock, but all of our housing stock meets that minimum quality standard uh, so that our residents are, are taken care of. Very good. Uh, welcome Thank comments you. and questions and feedback. Thank you. Uh, we also in the audience this evening have uh, Mr. Mike Radzik, who's an associate at um, Carlisle Wartman. Um, Mike, do you want to come to the podium? It's a small world. Mr. Radzik is Deputy Chief Radzik, husband. Um, and uh, Mr. Radzik, remind um, City Council and the community, so prior to joining, of course you retired as a lieutenant from the Washington County Sheriff's Office, right. and then you joined Ypsilanti Township, and you retired from Ypsilanti Township as the Director of Community Development? Uh, the Community Standards Office, okay. yes. Which handled planning, zoning, building inspecting, code compliance? All of that. And yes. did Ypsilanti Township have a, a rental inspection program? Uh, they did not until 2007, so as part of my duties as Director of that office, I spearheaded a task force team that uh, implemented in 2007 into 2008 the very first rental housing inspection program for Ypsilanti Township. That started with um, CDBG grant dollars in some low moderate income neighborhoods and over the course of a few years it grew to include all forms of rental housing within the township which um, quite opposite to Celine numbers about 10,000 okay. units. Um, I took a preliminary look at your numbers for the purposes of uh, responding to your city manager for a request for some information. Um, through the U.S. Census, through the community survey in 2019, 906 of your households reported being uh, renters, and that amounts to about 23%, just under one quarter of the residents of the city. Um, the breakdown from uh, what I did have a very lengthy and productive conversation with your assessor a couple of weeks ago, and I learned there's about 663 multifamily apartment units. Um, there's 81 mobile homes, most of which are believed to be rental units, and uh, 145 single-family homes that are not claiming um, principal residence exemption. In other words, they're not claiming homestead exemption to get out from under the 18 mils of uh, school tax. Not all of those will turn out to be rental, but by far the majority will turn out. And if you add up the multifamily apartment units, the mobile home units, and that number of zero PRE single family homes, it approximately equals what was reported to the Census Bureau in terms of your rental properties. Um, I spent 40 years as a public servant between law enforcement and Ypsilanti Township. When I retired last summer, I, this past fall, I joined Carlisle Workman Associates as a consultant. And one of the things I'm doing is working with communities that are interested in starting rental housing certification programs. Um, we are in the process of implementing one in the city of Howell. We're working with Milan, uh, Plymouth, uh, Clarkston, and uh, now Celine, if you choose to move forward with this. What I can tell you is um, I'm still a public servant at heart although I'm technically a consultant uh, for your code enforcement services. However, um, of all the things I did in my career, 
implementing this type of inspection program to help uh, raise the bar and hold property owners and tenants accountable for maintaining those minimum standards was probably one of the most um, enlightening and useful things for a community. It probably had one of the biggest impacts on the quality of life in the neighborhoods. Not only the tenants and the landlords were impacted, but if you read through some of the information, um, I know I experienced it here. I lived here in the city for 27 years, from 92 up until about two years ago when we moved elsewhere. I owned two different homes. I also rented. I rented a house and I rented an apartment here in the city during those periods of time. Um, and I can tell you that uh, landlords are all different. Some of them are outstanding and you would love to have them in your community. Some of them are less than stellar and they defer a lot of maintenance. And so it's not just the tenants that put up with that, but imagine living next to it if you haven't already had that experience in your own neighborhood. So I would say that this is one of the best things that the city could consider doing to help improve and maintain at least a bare minimum um, housing quality standard. And it's the standard that you yourself set. I checked and you adopted the 2015 International Property Maintenance Code as a local ordinance. You did that several years ago. Um, the, the 2018 version has been out and now the 2021 version is in play as well and there were some significant improvements that you may want to consider. But this is your property maintenance standard. You're not asking landlords to make significant investments and do wholesale upgrades to their electrical, plumbing, mechanical systems. You're just asking them to maintain what's there in good, proper working condition according to the code under which it was built, even if that code was 1940. It's as simple as that. And having done this in a number of communities now, I can tell you uh, the cost for the average landlord to comply with the program for single family homes is usually under $10 a month. And for multifamily apartment units is closer to $5 a month. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, I think thank, thank you, Mr. Razik. I'll, I'll kick it off and then again, we'll begin to my left and then and to my right and then with Mr. Seal, who's participating remotely. Um, the city manager already knows my position on this. I'm, I'm in favor of moving forward and moving forward expeditiously and getting something tangible, hopefully on a March council agenda for us to adopt. Um, I think my record as a council member and as a mayor is pretty clear. I, I usually err on the side of, of less regulations. Um, and I've certainly pursued a course of trying to streamline, modernize, and reduce red tape and the regulatory burden that exists on our businesses and private citizens. But as it relates to this specific issue, there are a number of issues that have been brought to my office's attention and the city's attention more broadly in recent months and years that makes it um, abundantly clear to me that we need some additional safeguards and policies and procedures in place to ensure that our, not only our, our landlords are responsible, but also our tenants. But specifically, um, we shouldn't have tenants living in, in apartments that don't have heat, um, that are having chronic maintenance issues, um, in, in which things are not being repaired quickly and, and properly. Um, and I'd also note that um, I'm, I'm surprised that nearly a quarter of our housing stock is, is rental. That, that was interesting to me. Um, but I would note for the record, we have a lot of very conscientious um, landlords in this community. I'll, I'll cite one specifically. I know I don't have to, but I will. Um, Danny Berry from Livonia Builders. Um, works well with our, our, our community development department, follows to a T our planning and zoning standards. It's great from a building inspecting uh, perspective, um, uses good building materials, you know, marble, stainless steel appliances, et cetera. Um, and because of that, he's rewarded. And he can offer a very reasonable, relatively high uh, price point for, for his units. And, and that's really what the market demands. So the point being, and I don't want to belabor this, is it's in a landlord's best interest to maintain. Their, their, their parcels and to be responsible and conscientious to their, their tenants, they will ultimately be rewarded. So um, I'm in favor of moving forward with this. I'll start with Mr. Del Orco. You can ask a question of Mr. Radzik or City Manager O'Toole, or you can simply state whether you're in favor of moving forward with a inspection program. Uh, yeah, I don't have any questions at this time. I enthusiastically support this initiative. Uh, this is a natural next step from the work that's already been done in adopting the international property maintenance standards uh, last year. Uh, I think this will only benefit all of the city's residents. Um, I, I myself live in an R2 rental district, and uh, I, I can see that there is a need for this. Very good. That was clear. Mayor Pratim Gearbaugh. Uh, 
Just a question. You know, we talk about Ann Arbor and comparing what they do in terms of Ann Arbor rental inspections, and I've known many that have had homes and stuff. How do you see our inspection program compared to theirs in the stringency there? I know of that can be enforced there. Great question. I have, I've never worked for Ann Arbor. I'll just throw that out there. Ann Arbor is a very professional, obviously a very professional organization. I know a lot of their folks. They are well known for being rather stringent. Um, they are also at times well known for being unreasonable, depending on which landlord you ask at any given moment. Um, I would hope and I would encourage council to strive, especially if, if our company was involved, I would insist that it be done we, we, you always want to leave a landlord with this. Even if they don't like having to pay the, the fees to comply, even if they don't like having to make certain repairs in order to be code compliant, if they can walk away and honestly say they were treated fairly and honestly and respectfully, then I think you've won. And in the end, um, you'll have much higher um, and consistent property maintenance uh, standard not only the aesthetic appearance, but more importantly the the life safety conditions inside those walls that you can't see from the street or from the backyard. I, I hate to compare one community to another. Um, I would not um, I would not favor having a reputation as Ann Arbor made, and that's just my personal opinion. I'm not speaking for the company, um, but that's just my personal feelings about it. And having built a program from the ground up in your neighbor, neighboring community to the east, which is very densely populated with rental housing, um, I can tell you there is a, a good way to do it. And that's what I'm hoping, because I, I support this. Um, we realized, I think, well, it's been two or three years now since one of the Thorncrest apartment roofs collapsed when we were trying to do some work on that, the realization of that we had no real rule, no real policies or rules in place that we could actually do to do these inspections. Luckily, yes. emergency declared it and was allowed, but we need to do this on a regular basis. So I'm very supportive of this. I do support the idea of a biannual um, approach. Uh, I don't see that as an annual one. I think it just becomes, if there's an issue that can be brought up, I think if we can put into the code that if somebody does make a complaint that we can have some kind of a required inspection or something like that, that would be helpful. Yeah. Actually, Michigan State Housing Law requires you to respond to any tenant complaint. So your building department is required by state law to respond and investigate. Um, and there would be, you know, we've, I, I've been involved and other, other staff have been involved with writing ordinances. We just completed one that the city of Howell uh, just recently did their second reading adoption of a rental housing certification ordinance. And uh, in fact, tonight they're voting on their second reading on their fee schedule. And we helped, you know, craft that. And speaking of fee schedules, I just want to point out, you may or may not have read it in the materials you received, but um, this program and our goal is that there's zero impact on your budget in terms of tax dollars. There should not be dollar one of tax dollars spent to support this program in any way, shape, or form. It would be completely supported by user fees in terms of the inspection cycle, I too agree with you. I support a biennial once every two year inspection. You can build in incentives for the good landlords of which Mr. Mayor, I think probably 95% are the good ones. And like every other profession, some of which I've been involved in, the bad apples always <laughs> make the rest of us look bad. Um, but you can build in incentives. If they cruise through relatively unscathed and they demonstrate um, good practices that they can earn additional time, another six months or another 12 months on a certificate. And over time, you'll find the first cycle especially, but the first couple of cycles, you're looking and inspecting these places that have never been touched before. And I'm here to tell you there will be lots and lots of code violations. That's a bad thing when you hear it, but on the opposite end, it'll feel good when they're all corrected. I would encourage you to talk to your uh, members of your fire department. Fire departments are usually champions of programs like this. Um, I know in Ypsilanti Township they were, especially after they, uh, they lost an infant toddler in a, a house fire at a rental property, and the fire department came to us and said, we found no evidence of a smoke alarm. 
Not that it was there, but no batteries were in it. It just wasn't there. And this happened to have been a HUD inspected property. And either it got missed or, or I don't know what happened. But so talk to your fire members of your fire department. I, I cannot imagine that they would not wholeheartedly support a program like this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gerba. Council Member Dillon, any questions for our guests or the city manager or simply uh, if you want to offer um, a thought on whether you're comfortable moving forward? Thank you. Um, yes, I do enthusiastically support this initiative. I think this is a very important tool um, for tenants, for landlords, and for the city. Um, I, I think that it's a benefit to all of those. Um, I, I appreciate that you talked about that Michigan state law requires when there is a complaint because one of the issues right now is that there are tenants that are afraid to come forward because they're afraid they're going to be evicted if they complain and they are living in substandard conditions and that should never be the case under any circumstances and anytime the city has an opportunity to to intervene to that to make sure that there is an even level of of accessible um, housing for people, uh, I think that's important that we do that. I think we are obligated to do that. So, and I do support the biannual um, approach. I also would like to see some consideration for inspection upon tenant turnover to make sure that when new tenants are going in, they know what to expect and um, that it, it is a, a home. Because one of the issues right now is that in some of the complexes that we have, if there is an issue in an apartment, there isn't any place to displace that person to. And so if they were to know when they came in, yes, there is a deficiency with this, that, or the other thing, and it's fixed upon you know, arrival, then there's less of a chance of that person having to be displaced. So I, I would like to... It, talk about that at some point if that's at all possible. I can tell you I had a conversation very recently with the city manager in uh, Trenton because they do uh, rental housing inspections every three years and every tenant change. And they are, they're in the process of being challenged. It's not a legal challenge at this point. It's just a lot of, a lot of noise. But um, the theory is that it's inequitable. In other words, you're inspecting this person's property every three years because they have a solid, long-standing, good tenant, but you're inspecting me every th once every year or every six months because I have high turnover. So that's, that's a philosophy uh, policy decision that city council would have to um, land someplace on. Right. No, I agree. And I mean, there's definitely room for, for discussion on that. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, my first thought is, you know, why is there so much turnover? Um, <laughs> and making sure that there isn't an yeah. issue that needs to be addressed. So thank you very much for bringing this forward to us. You're welcome. Very good. Mr. Commissioner, do you have questions or um, do you want to offer some opinions on whether you're comfortable moving forward? Yes, definitely. Uh, it goes without saying, as my colleagues have said, that this is, uh, this is very important and I'm, I'm glad we're finally doing this. Uh, I believe in quality of life, health, safety, and structural integrity of, of the properties. Uh, you said that it's not going to, it shouldn't cost any tax dollars. Yes. Uh, what kind of a staff time will it, will it approximately take a ballpark? You, you seem like you've been doing this for a while and an expert. So are you able to ballpark uh, the amount of time that it would take for a staff member to keep up with uh, 906 or so uh, rental units? Um, on a two-year cycle, it would be very manageable, very reasonable. Um, depending on how city council chose to structure the program and the staffing for it, um, there's economies of scale. Obviously, we're, as I mentioned, we're talking with some of your neighbors, but our company has building inspectors, building officials, housing inspectors. We actually uh, administer and completely run seven different building departments in Southeast Michigan. Um, with that include, some many of them include rental housing inspections and point of sale inspections, which is sort of a footnote on the mm -hmm. handout I gave you that I would also ask you to consider because 
one of the criticisms from landlords is that why are you only inspecting rental properties and not owner occupied? And the least intrusive and most reasonable way to do that, I believe, would be point of sale. Every time it changes hands, it gets inspected the same as a rental property would. Um, so I don't know if I answered all your questions. If I didn't, I apologize. I'll take another crack at it. Uh, well, I, I appreciate you uh, bringing up the point of sale because I lived in a community, uh, Dearborn, where they where they did that. So it, it, there there was a little bit of extra cost before uh, the, the sale would go through, but rest assured, nothing major. Um, are we talking staff time? Maybe like you know twenty, you know. 10 hours a week? And, and how do we gear up as far as starting this program? Uh, I think we have an idea of some of the, of where we would want to start, where there's been complaints and concerns, but how do we do that uh, fairly to bring our, you know, the properties in, into compliance and uh, to be organized about it? Well, some of the basics, I guess, to answer your question, um, Inspecting a single-family house is obviously going to take more time than inspecting a small multifamily apartment unit of which there may be 12 in a building and they're all fairly the same layout, the same amenities, so on and so forth. The difference, though, the apartment building also probably has a mechanical room that needs inspection. It probably also has laundry facilities that need inspection and common areas like stairwell assemblies and whatnot that have especially fire safety code requirements involved. Um, in terms of you were kind of getting to how many days a week and whatnot, I, my sense is if these numbers turn out to be accurate, and usually it ends up being slightly higher than what gets published like this, mm -hmm. um, this would be manageable uh, a couple of full days a week or a handful of half days a week for inspector time. Mm -hmm. And then the clerical aspect of it could be handled um, probably the same amount. And a lot of that clerical stuff can be done remotely. We do have a lot of clerical support that gets done remotely from people that you know, don't, aren't physically in the office and maybe not even in, in Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is all going to be at dependent on your comfort level, on how you would like to see it operated. Okay. We're not going to dictate to you. We're going to listen to you and, and you know, provide the services in the manner that you want. How to start up? Obviously, 900 or so pro, uh, rental units cannot all be inspected at once. If it were a biennial program every two years, we would sit down with um, whichever stakeholders that you assign to work with us to develop a implementation plan. It can be done geographically. It can be done according to complaints, as you mentioned. Um, it can be done in a variety of different ways. Um, you basically just knock it down. You, we, we would strategically schedule so that it would take the entire first two-year cycle to touch them all. And the reason you do that is if you want to continue the program long term, you don't want to have a month or two where you're bombarded and you need extra people, and then other months when they're twiddling their thumbs and have nothing to do. You want to spread the workload out, not necessarily evenly, but strategically, in order to provide the services as promised to the landlords. There's two things landlords hate. And when we started up in Ipsy Township, I met with McKinley and some of the other large providers. We met with some of the smaller ones that owned a couple of homes that was someone's retirement down the road, and then a couple of gentlemen, one of whom who actually lived here in the city that owned about 60 homes. And they all said the same thing. What's important to you as a landlord? The first and foremost was the same, consistency. It shouldn't matter what day the inspector shows up or which inspector shows up. I want the inspection to be approximately the same outcome regardless. That way, they know what to expect from us. And we'll give them the checklist long in advance. We'll even help tutor them and give them educational classes. Here's what we're coming to look for. And here's the consequences, and here's what you can do to help prepare your property. Um, so I, did I answer all your questions this time? <laughs> uh, yes, but I have more. 
what is the what is the what do you envision the user fee being? Um, again, that's a council decision. It would be a fee schedule that you would uh, vote to approve and adopt. Um, if you chose uh, through your city manager to uh, ask us to develop further develop a proposal, we would come up with um, what we felt was a reasonable fee schedule that would support the services that we would provide and at the same time be acceptable and within your comfort level. Um, they, they vary from community to community. Um, for instance, up in Howell, um, I did a study. I looked at 12 or 15 communities in Southeast Michigan, all of which did rental housing inspections. And we basically, and we can do this here, we would basically take your set of numbers on apartments, mobile homes, single family homes, plug them into all these different communities' fee schedules and see what, what, the, what the outcome is. What does it look like? It, I'm telling you, it, it, the range is so wide. Some communities charge as little as $60, $75 to inspect a single-family home. And we all know a single-family home could be a 850-square-foot uh, bungalow or it could be a 3,500-square-foot four bedroom home with a lot of amenities. Others go all the way up to two, three hundred dollars. Um, I, I, I can't give you a number now because we'd have to do we'd have to do a deeper dive into this. I'm I'm envisioning in the hundred to somewhere between a hundred and hundred and fifty for a single family home. That That's would all put, I was looking for is just yeah, that just an, I, that just, would put just the an monthly, idea. So basically you take the registration fee, the inspection fee and you always want to throw in at least one reinspection because most inspectors, if they're, they're good at it, they'll find something. And we tutor the landlord, say, make sure you have smoke detector batteries with you. Make sure you have this because if we see something and you can fix it right behind us and save yourself a trip and money, do it by all means. Um, so we take registration, inspection, one reinspection, and I'd like to keep it for a single family home under ten dollars a month, if the landlord were to choose to recover those costs in the form of a rent increase, and for single-family apartments, like I said, it almost always turns out to be less than five dollars a unit. It just now I will say the cost of the landlord is if if the place is a shambles, if it's a train wreck, they're going to have to invest, and in those situations, it's sad because there's probably been a long history of deferred maintenance that they were almost certainly aware of. And I would hope here in Saline that would be few and far between. And lastly, mm -hmm. do you see uh, a, a, any increase uh, in, in assessment? Uh, you know, the properties are gonna be better maintained. Uh, rents can, it, can improve. Do you see any uh, impact on that? taxable values of properties? I would direct that to your assessor because I'm not qualified to answer that question. All right. I do know with commercial multifamily properties, sometimes assessments are tied to rents. And I would think, Mr. Mayor, to your comment about the good landlords, if they could dis proudly display that stamp of City of Saline certification, it would help them justify what they're charging because they know that it's code compliant, it's healthy, and it's safe. Okay, thank you very much. I'll, I'll leave it at that. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilmember Kamir Sulak. Councilmember Krause, um, thoughts on moving forward with this policy or, and or questions for the city manager or our guest, Mr. Radzik? I don't have any questions at this time, but I emphatically support this. I was surprised we didn't have one already, so yes. Okay, very good. And last but not least, Mr. CEO, who's participating remotely, questions for Mr. Radzik or the city manager and your thoughts on proceeding with a, the development of a rental inspection program. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Mike. It's good to hear from you again. You too, Jack. Um, you know, Mike and I kind of share a similar background in that we were both police officers in a former life. Um, one thing being a police officer gives you the opportunity to do that a lot of other professions don't, uh, much like the firefighters, is that you get in to see a lot of different kinds of housing and domiciles uh, the normal people, normal folks in a normal walk of life don't get to see. And you see a huge range uh, 
you know, I've been in some rental units where I thought, wow, this really looks nice. And I've been in others when I thought this is really, as you've said, Mike, kind of a train wreck. Uh, and, and you wonder sometimes how how that escapes in this kind of a community. So, but I think it, it, they're few and far between the bad places. But those are the kind of landlords, I think, that need to have some kind of a program like this to push them in the direction of providing a uh, high quality uh, place for the tenants to live. So I'm highly in favor of this kind of an inspection program. I think that uh, it is an additional expense for the landlord, can be, but I think that it's uh, a price that, that needs to be paid so that we can move forward with guaranteeing um, good standard of living for all the people that live in our community. Very good, thank you, Mr. Seal. Mr. Radzik, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, City Manager O'Toole, I believe you have your consensus. That I do, thank Excellent, you. very good. Um, well, before we wrap up, uh, two additional items. I know that many of you are planning to tour a, uh, a loom facility in the coming weeks. I would ask the city clerk to add the potential sale of Lot 20A on East Michigan Avenue as a discussion item at our next regular council meeting. I will be looking for consensus at that at time as to whether or not uh, we would like to empower the negotiating team, which is comprised of the city manager, our listing agent, Mr. Co, Mr. Gearbaugh, and Ms. Uh, Krause, to uh, pursue a sales agreement and then bring that back for council consideration, specifically for, for Loom. Um, and then the final thing I wanted to announce is I got a call this past Saturday from Jeff Felkamp, one of our building inspectors. He wanted me to compliment, and I will do it publicly, um, Armando and his staff at uh, Tormino's Pizza and also Paradise Mexican Restaurant on the west side of town. Um, they were in their kitchen, I believe it was two weeks ago now, smelled some smoke and noticed a fire in the west side laundromat. Um, and intervened quickly before it became a, a catastrophe. Um, but I bring this up not only to compliment Armando and his staff, but also to note that there was, um, and Mr. Radzik's uh, comments made me think of this, a deficient uh, fire extinguisher in the laundromat. So our building department would like to remind um, uh, occupants of commercial spaces that a, a functioning fire extinguisher that is accessible is part of the building code. You must have it. You can be cited if you do not. Um, it's really important. It's in your best interest to maintain that and to, uh, to ensure that it works properly. So again, just wanted to acknowledge that for the record. Um, at this time, we come to the second public comment period. Under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time, make comment or question to City Council. This public comment period will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested, but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. Are there any citizen comments from those in the audience this evening? The record will reflect there are none. Clerk Royal, did we receive any comments either before or during the meeting in which the individual wanted their thoughts read at this time? Very good. Is there any other business to come before Saline City Council this evening? Please note our upcoming meetings. We will be providing dinner at um, at both uh, on both March the 7th and March the 21st. Clerk is just going to order some pizzas or sandwiches. We're not going to take orders anymore. If you'd like food, you're welcome to take it. Um, if not, you're, you're, you're on your own. You can get dinner either before or after the meeting. Uh, with that, if there's nothing further to be brought before um, this group this evening, the chair would be delighted to entertain a motion to adjourn our regular meeting at 8.33 p.m. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Sulek. Is there a second? Second. second? Seconded by Council Member Dillon. All those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.